Welcome back, I'm Dan Morfitt and this is the final part of the Daily Rundown. Time now to look at some of the more unusual stories that have been making the news with Mike and Cal. Now, producer Jack has been trolling the internet for these and I haven't seen them myself, so I don't know what's going to come next. <laughs> it could be rubbish. It could be the best bit of TV you've watched in ages. Uh, story one, how much would you pay for a chicken sandwich? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, best TV ever. Best TV you've ever seen. <laughs> Who needs the BBC? You've got channels. Seven. Uh, how much would you pay for a chicken sandwich? Well, one man spent more than fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. One thousand five hundred dollars. What? And one. six months making the sandwich from scratch, even growing his own wheat and killing his own chicken. So, how far would you go for a chicken sandwich? So he spent all that money on making the sandwich. Yeah, I've seen this story. Wait, it's it's amazing. So, was it just to have this specific sandwich, or was that a byproduct of it? No, I think he wanted to prove. Why uh, have you been smoking, basically? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad case of the munchies. Well, he would have okay. had to have grown that himself. Right, yeah. Um, I think he did it to show uh, how indebted we are to supermarkets and okay. the the artificial food chain of things. Oh, so this was kind of a moral, yeah. ethical thing. I'm he down grew, for that. He grew I mean, his own wheat. He milked his own cows to make butter and cheese right he grew his own lettuce he grew his own tomatoes uh, and i think he grew the chicken from an egg brought it did up. he lay the egg himself he didn't lay the egg himself <laughs> yeah. what's your favorite song yeah yeah <laughs> well, i'm sorry i'm confused which came first <laughs> <laughs> the egg or the chicken what well i think he might have had some egg in there as right. well so he grew uh, the chicken and then Killed and then it. killed it. Made right. his own bread from the wheat he grew. Then killed it. Killed yeah. it. <laughs> 1,500 quid. Wow. 1,500 dollars. Dollars. Right. Well, it, it, sort of, it sort of shows how much... Um, like you, you talk about how like much time he had on his hands. Well, yeah, you talk about like cheap meat and stuff that you get from mm. the supermarket. Oh, that's a good price or anything. But how much does that meat actually cost? Uh, right. in, the, in the long scheme of things, I suppose, is also what he's trying to say. That like, if we mm. could spend so little on meat, what's the byproduct of that? I mean, it's it's... If it's costing him fifteen thousand or one thousand five hundred just for a sandwich, mm. in reality, how is it we can spend so little on on our meats? He could have gone to Pratamonjo and spent yeah. a similar amount of money <laughs> yeah. on a sandwich. Other yeah. sandwich places are available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on to our next story because I really want a chicken sandwich now. Uh, now, judges are meant to be impartial whilst handing out sentences, but one justice has commented on the man she was sentencing. The man in question had a string of offences, all which involved racist and abusive behaviour. After the verdict, the man performed a Nazi salute and then proceeded to call the female judge a four-letter word, which I will not repeat on this show. Oh, go on. No. <laughs> so whilst handing out the sentence, the ju judge replied, you're a bit of a four-letter word yourself. This is odd. But is it justified? I'd like to see a bit more personality in judges and things. You got like, <laughs> what, you like got, Simon Cowell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got like he's a judge. judge. You got like Judge Judy in in the United you States. You do and Judge Rinder, Judge Rinder was, all, all of that, and, it, and they, is they it got Judge Rinder or Rinder. I don't know. He's a judge. I don't know. Judge. He McJudge. might watch this show. <laughs> Judgey McJudge face, whatever his name is. Imagine if they were all like that. That'd be yeah. great, wouldn't it? It would. It would make going to court. A, a little bit more fun. <laughs> <laughs> make going to court a little bit breezier. <laughs> like I have been today. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> well, I don't go, I don't, I don't go to court that often, Cal, so I don't really want to make it that easy. What you know, are you breezy. up for, Your Honour? <laughs> well, I was talking to this 18 year old's math student, <laughs> uh, yeah. and then she wanted to yeah. bring an injunction out against me for no reason at all. <laughs> Don't know. Don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm very tired. <laughs> so yeah, she called him a, a, a c word. Yes, back. right. Yeah. and it's exploded on the internet, yeah. hasn't it? And loads of people are like saying she's brilliant, really, mm. because this guy does seem pretty vile, mm. and he said this thing. And I guess yeah, it's it's that thing in your job. When do you know when to stay professional, or because. It was a, kind of an instinctive thing, possibly. That I she hope did she it. drops the gavel as well. Yes, yeah, that's what just I was just as she did it. Yeah, Mike dropped. Yeah, you're a two, mm. and then just yeah. raise yeah. your hands, yeah. judge out. Yeah, well, if the whole job, whoever was there, everyone just went, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna make a video, yeah. aren't they? Go, dog life. Yeah. Sick burn. He's gonna get made fun of in prison. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Him all the time. I doubt that's the worst thing that's gonna happen to him in prison. <laughs> I'd be worried about other stuff happening in prison, but he's probably not gonna fit in. <laughs> well, you might know next time you go to court. <laughs> yeah. Just right, let's move on to our next story now. Uh, libraries are meant to be a quiet, relaxed environment, but one library in Finland is set to buck that trend by installing a soundproof karaoke booth. Where did you get this story from? 
The idea is that people who don't fancy performing to a packed bar after a tipple or five can instead enjoy a sing-along in the relative privacy of a library, regardless of their ability to hold a tune. So, what song would be best to sing in a library? I don't know. Why oh, quiet, people... quiet by Bjork. Yes, it's brilliant. So, oh, so, so quiet. quiet. Shh. If we perform a song on here, we have to pay for oh, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't these people stay at home and sing their song? Because they, that's an option. They yeah. can stay it's at home. It's Finland. And do it. I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah why <laughs> why don't no one sings at home, home as a rule. <laughs> People lot. are at home scanning <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, it can and, be relaxing. Yeah, and learning songs. No, but in Finland, isn't booze really, really expensive? Right. So they never drink at home. Oh, so they're always right. Right. Okay. okay. So I think right. I think this is is a different kind of release for them. Yeah. Go right. to the library and. But ka- karaoke is a massive thing in like China or Japan, and and yeah. like, I mean it's 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 a huge thing. Um, so, but having it in a library, yeah. How odd. much is booze in a library? Do you have to give it back <laughs> after you've drank it? <laughs> I don't think you can get booze in a library. Well, that's what? what I'm saying. If they're going out singing to have some, because that's when they go to drink, then what are they drinking at the library? Yeah. What's wrong yeah. with having karaoke why in the bars? It, and why not just have it at your home if you're not why drinking not, anyway? Why not just put books in bars? Yeah, yeah brilliant. There you yeah. go. Best of yeah. both worlds. Yeah. All worlds. Forever. <laughs> Finland. <laughs> I love these stories. Finland. Right, uh, story number four. NASA accidentally sold a priceless artifact from the 1969 moon landing. <laughs> but how? It never happened. <laughs> Denier. <Yeah. laughs> oh, what a great first sentence. <laughs> NASA accidentally sold a priceless artifact from the 1969 moon landing. The bag was used to collect moon samples and was sold by mistake last year. God, this is the best episode of Bargain Hunt mm-hmm. ever. It was snapped up uh, for just $995, that's around 700 quid, but NASA now say it's a, quite a rare artifact, <laughs> if not a national treasure. Whoops. NASA only realised the mistake when the woman sent back the bag for authentication. <laughs> uh, so what piece of history would you like to own? Um, I, I don't know. A, a, a dinosaur. A, <laughs> <laughs> just, just running around. I was uh, just going to go with like a, a big sword, like a really big sword. <laughs> you can <laughs> buy big swords. Yeah, I know, like, but like a historical one. Right, like yeah, one that's yeah. been used properly. What, like, like Excalibur? In, yeah. 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 One use. of the big swords, the yeah. proper big, the, 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 the famous ones. Yeah. Hen- Henry V from Agincourt. <laughs> yes, yeah. brilliant. There you go. All these good ones. Um, a, a crown. The, the, the crown? It's quite historical. I could own that. The Irish, the Irish uh, royal uh, jewels are still out there, aren't they? Are they? Yeah, they've, they've been... never been found. I'll give them a go. The, the Irish crown jewels, they're, they're still somewhere. They could have been melted down, but... NASA could have sold them by mistake. Yeah, NASA, NASA sent someone. them to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe they sold a bag, though, that had been into space and just gone, <laughs> yeah, you can have it. How much? Less than a gram. How do you, how do you accidentally sell something? Did they just put it up? Why would you sell a bag? I don't, I'm really confused by this story. Dan. Probably somebody was eBaying whilst yeah. drunk. It's yeah, it's just strange. And they worked it? at NASA. Yeah. And they had to... what's <laughs> yeah, NASA, it happens. What's NASA doing selling anything? Like, surely at some point all of this stuff's going to be useful yeah. again. Surely, yeah, they, they should be keeping it as artifacts yeah. for future missions. Yeah, no matter what it is, if you're going, this has come from the moon, don't sell it. Well, just somebody's going to get sacked at NASA yeah, for this. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then go to Finland and sing. <laughs> right, finally, life can be a bit of a challenge if you've got ginger hair. Yeah. Who wrote this? Preach. <laughs> Have you seen who's on the sofa? Preach. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Life can be a challenge if you've got ginger hair. Mm-hmm. Making up only 0.6% of the world's population, <laughs> gingers are in a very, very small minority. But on August the 19th... <gasps> That's Eight days soon. away. Yeah. Uh, redheads will be able to take advantage of free access to Twycross <laughs> Zoo. They're opening their gates to people with ginger hair for World Orangutan Day. Oh, I read about this. Mike, will you be joining them at the zoo? Yes, but I mean, it's what are they trying to say? <laughs> are they saying I'm an orangutan? Yeah. Well, they're What's, probably saying, I mean, you know, what? our lineage with primates right. is so long and justified. There's only one ginger in the... Pri- primate world, and that's an, 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 ora- an orangutan. You can't spell orangutan without most of the word orange, so that yes, relates okay, to that as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm all for it. If I get any anything free uh, from my disability, then then you know I, I, I'll use this. 
You can um, go to Twa Crossy for free. I know I'm saying Twa Crossy. Only on this day, though. Only on this day. Well, well today? No, the, no. Oh, the, the 19th. August. August. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you, yeah, you going to go down and partake? Um, <sighs> You're on holiday right now. Yeah, no, I think I might be busy that day, but no, I'm definitely going to go. I want to see some Jack's going to go along. Is he? Yeah, but he's more copper. Yeah, so yeah. So he doesn't yeah. know if he's going Auburn. to get that in. Do they have like um, a, a colour chart at the entrance so they got to compare you to? They like, just get a bottle of Iron Brew. <laughs> yeah. And they just go, how much are you like this? Do they let the gingers interact with the orangutans? <laughs> Can no, I go well, into the... I think it's a major trapping mission. As soon as they've got all these gingers in there, they're going to put you in cages. Oh, God. They've got to preserve you. It's happening. Only it's happening. Oh, no. <laughs> right, that's it. Time to wrap up the daily rundown for another week because Mike is crying. <laughs> uh, thanks to my guests this evening, the ginger Mike Milling and Cal Doughty. I'm an orangutan. Uh, thank you to the fantastic singer-songwriter as well, Eleanor Nelly. She was brilliant. I'm Dan Morfitz, and from everybody here, including producer Jack and Adam in the gallery, have a great rest of the week and have an ace weekend too. And gingers, enjoy your day in the zoo. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs>